Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Uli. And I'd just like to say what a fantastic day it's been. And a huge thank, to you, thank you to you, Uli, for inviting me, and Amanda, and all your support staff. It's been a fantastic day. Thank you for being here as well. I'm really excited to be presenting the last talk of the day, entitled Reef Invaders. I'm going to be talking about the lionfish invasion issue and a solution to it. And it perhaps isn't a new idea or a new solution, but it is an idea that's worth spreading and supporting um, to help come to fruition. So forgive this image slightly for being grainy. It was taken back in 2002 before cameras got high definition. It was taken by myself at age 21 in Andros. And I spent a the summer there after my degree um, volunteering to help collect baseline reef data and this experience definitely changed the course of my life. I fell in love with the Bahamas and the marine environment, and it inspired me on to go and get a master's and a PhD. And certainly when I took this image, I didn't think I'd be showing it some 10 years later at a TEDx event, talking about an invasion that at that point hadn't even happened. So the marine environment in the Bahamas is much more important than just shaping my life. It's represented in the flag, by the aqua blue, it's represented in the coat of arms by the queen conch, representing the diversity of marine life here. Even the name itself, Bahamas, is derived from the Spanish, Bahama, meaning shallow seas. And these shallow seas support an abundance of marine life. This marine life is particularly important to the Bahamas, crawfish, lobsters. It's the biggest fishery here in the Bahamas, but also in the Caribbean. Last year, uh, 2013, it brought in some $48 million in revenue. Queen conch has been a staple di diet of Bohemians for hundreds of years, mostly consumed in country, but still export values up at $5.1 million. And the grouper, a similar story, export values at around $6 million. These three species are so important to the Bahamas, they've been termed the Holy Trinity. However, there's many other species that are also important, and the reef systems themselves attract visitors every year. However, reefs in the Bahamas, sorry, Yuli just walking past me with a live fish. Reefs are changing in the Bahamas, just like they are worldwide. So they're under threat, and they're under threat from climate change, increasing events of storms, and, sorry, go back one, um, and severity of storms, uh, increasing water temperatures, making corals more susceptible to bleaching and disease, also increasing um, the acidity of our oceans, decreasing the corals' abilities to build their structures, and more direct impacts from us as well, coastal development, sedimentation and pollution, and overfishing. This is the most recent threat to our reefs, and this is the last thing that many of our native species see. This is the lionfish. We click play here. It's a beautiful fish and a very common sight on our reefs. There's two species that invaded the Caribbean, Trias volatons and Trias mars. They're undistinguishable by sight. And they're a beautiful but destructive visitor. So originating from the Indo-Pacific, and due to their beauty, they were transported to the Caribbean for the ornamental pet trade. And it's way back in the 1980s that we think that um, Aquarium owners release these fish into the ocean. So here you can see the dot off of Florida, and if you take note in the top uh, corner, there's years ticking by. So we saw them in 1980. They spread up the eastern side of the states by 2000, hitting Bermuda. By 2004, we had our first sighting here in the Bahamas off of New Providence. And then they spread rapidly throughout the rest of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So why have they been successful? Why were they the perfect invader? There's lots of reasons. To start with, they're very unfussy about where they live. You will find them on the reef, in the seagrass, in the sand, on artificial structure. And you will find them at depths from one to a thousand feet. They're also disease and parasite resistant. There's very little predation of uh, lionfish. There's been efforts to train our native predators to eat lionfish, but some of these efforts have involved spearing and offering up lionfish to native sharks and barracudas. However, this is more taught that humans will give out a free snack 
than teaching them to hunt lionfish themselves. There are cases where perhaps they are predated on. This is a cormorant off of the coast of Florida, and grouper and sharks have been seen to eat them. But these predation events are very sporadic and by no means controlling their huge numbers. Part of the reason they're, they're also deterred by they deter predators is their venomous spines, of which they have 18. So they have 13 along the dorsal here, they have three just next to the anal vent, and one on each of the pelvic spines. And it contains a neurotoxin that is quite painful to experience. They're really good at reproduction. So this is a juvenile lionfish, and if you look, take note of the scale here, he's just a couple of centimeters long, but would be sexually mature within a year of its life. Females can reproduce by releasing an egg mass. This egg mass contains 20,000 eggs. We know from histology studies that they can potentially do this every four days. So if you think about that, 20,000 eggs every four days, that's two million eggs a year. You can see why they've spread so far. But so what? Where reefs are now covered in these beautiful fish, does it really matter? Well, yes, and this is why. They are eating everything. They're incredible hunters. These beautiful pectoral fins are used to corral fish. They can actually shoot a water jet that disorientates their prey and lines them up so they can eat them whole. There's something we call a gape-limited predator, so they're not fussy about what they eat. They will eat anything that will fit into their mouths. This is a pretty typical gut content uh, dissection of a lionfish. Um, if we have a look, it actually contains 16 individual fish, and this is pretty typical. And this is the big reason why we're worried about having the lionfish on our reefs. They're eating a lot of our juvenile fish. They're the ones that are really important to us economically, the grouper and the snapper, and the ones that are playing those key roles in the reef, like parrotfish who graze the algae and um, allow the corals to grow. So if the lionfish are eating all these fish, there's a knock-on effect throughout the system, and we can have a reef change from an alga, a coral-dominated state to an algal-dominated state. They may also be having a social economic effect on our country. So Lionfish are being found in condos, these structures that are used to aggregate lobsters for the lobster fishery, and they've been found in condos, and they've been found to reduce the number of lobsters in those condos. So let's get rid of them, let's eradicate lionfish. Well, the most effective way to remove lionfish currently is to spear them individually. Remember that they can live across that huge depth range, one to a thousand feet. We're really limited about how much time we can spend under the ocean, so lionfish are here to stay. So what could be if we're looking forward to 2023? This is one possibility. Perhaps a reef covered in lionfish and little else, and dominated by algae rather than coral. But there is a solution. We should eat them. This brings me around to a campaign I've been spearheading at the Cape Luther Institute. And it's a campaign, You Slay, We Pay. We're buying uh, lionfish directly from our local fishermen. Uh, we're paying a price that's on par with lobster, so around $11 a pound for fillets. Um, and it's been fairly successful so far. We've had a few drop-offs. It's been running since the close of the lobster uh, season. This is one chap dropping off his lionfish. He brought in a bucket full of whole lionfish, for which he gets $8 a pound. Um, it was around $20 worth he brought in, so he walked away with nearly $200. Lionfish are pretty easy to catch as well if you're a fisherman. They're really abundant on the reef, and you'll see here in this clip that they're relatively very easy to spear. So this is another one of our fishermen, Nehemiah, showing them showing us just how easy it is. Very easy to approach. And remember, you know where the spines are, so if you remove those, or just remember where they are, they're very safe to handle as well. 
So they can be filleted like many other fish, and this is just another short like clip that. showing us how to fillet. Nehemiah demonstrating. You can see he's already filleted a few lionfish in the background. As he cuts along the top there, you'll see the, the meat inside is white and thick. Looks, tastes very similar to grouper. I say better than grouper. Oh. It actually has a very high omega-3 content, so it's really good for you. There's been no recorded cases of cigarettera in lionfish. And remember, the venom is in the spine. They're venomous, and they're not a poisonous fish. So the meat is really good. And they're the most sustainable choice you can make. They can be substituted into any dish. So this is one of my favorites. <laughs> it's a bacon-wrapped lionfish. It's delicious. And it's actually served on lionfish spines. The spines are safe uh, as long as you bake them. It denatures the protein, and then they pretty much become a cocktail stick. You can substitute them into a conch salad. This is delicious. Lionfish ceviche, lionfish salad. You can do lionfish fingers with them. And you can even make jewelry from them as well. Their fins and spines are quite beautiful. So they're a very versatile fish. This idea of eating lionfish, like I said at the beginning, it's not necessarily a new campaign. Eat them to beat them, uh, eat a lionfish, save a reef, all these similar campaigns are out there. However, there are barriers to them. There's even a cookbook for lionfish that, um, that Reef launched. And the tacos that you ate at lunch were from Erin Green, and she's been buying lionfish on New Providence for several years with seasonal sunshine Bahamas. So what are the barriers to this fishery and this market really taking off? So this misconception is one of the biggest ones. People having this fear of lionfish and thinking that you can't eat it and that it's poisonous and that it could kill you. This is one of the biggest. This, coupled with the venomous spines and the fear of envenomation, um, really you know, worries people. This is my hand just after we did some lionfish calls. Unfortunately, we didn't have hot water on the boat, and I suffered from some swelling. It's you know, more severe than a bee sting, but everybody is different. Some people don't react so severely. Um, and if you're a fisherman, you know, do you want to risk um, an envenomation? So how can we overcome these barriers? Well, with some education. This is Deep Creek's homecoming, Conch Fest, last June, where we were serving lionfish. And it was a huge hit, particularly with the younger generations. And these, after all, are our future. We've been working in local schools and with the, in, in the community. And you'll see here a shot of uh, a symposium down at the Cable Luther Institute. And we even have a member of government attending. So dispelling these myths and overcoming these fears is a key, and providing our local fishermen with the right tools as well. So if you spear a lionfish with a three-pronged spear, it's much safer than using the more traditional Hawaiian sling, because the fish can slip back down the shaft, and um, you run the risk of being stung. Also, having puncture-proof gloves available, um, which reduce any stings significantly, and knowing how to treat a sting. So, Hot water, hot as you can stand, is a way to treat a lionfish sting. Nobody's ever died from a sting, as, but you can treat them. Uh, the quicker that you treat them, the more effective it can be. So having hot water, a thermos of hot water on a boat is key. This is um, what we want to see in 2023. So a typical Bohemian restaurant serving up lionfish. It's on the menu alongside everything else. And perhaps, you know, the holy trinity need a plus one. It's a new fish. So a call for action for you all today. If you ate lionfish at lunch, fantastic. Keep eating lionfish, you know. Um, if you're out at a restaurant, ask for lionfish. Help to create that demand, and the supply will come. And talk about the issues. Spread the word. Educate those that you meet and know. So I'd just like to finish up by saying, slay, pay, eat, and repeat. Thank you.